All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the third day of the workshop. So um, yesterday we talked about, yeah, yesterday we ended here talking about the substitution functionality in the SED commands. Um, yeah, pretty much all of the command in the SED, uh, uh, in the SED uh, function is very similar. Um, so today we're going to talk about one more functionality. Uh, which is the uh, the C uh, chain, uh, which stands for change. So the syntax would be SED, uh, the X uh, indicating the line that we are working with, C stands for change, and your new line, so a new a string that you want to be, uh, that line to be changed into. Okay, so um, yeah, um, yeah, let's try the example here. Um, it, but as you can see, what it does is that it changes the third line to hello world. Yeah. Right. And let's maybe wait for two or three minutes for the People who just came in to, to log on Hoffman to him. Okay, um, yeah, let's talk about another uh, function in, in, in the SCD commands. So it's called a subset, but I like to think the P as a print. Uh, well, I, I think that's what it actually means is print. So basically printing out certain lines based on the number that you uh, put here. So um, so the basic syntax SCD, uh, X comma Y, which is the same as what we learned yesterday. So from line X to line Y, um, including both lines and then print it out. So, uh, which indicates the action that you are doing here. Uh, and okay, let's also try the example. So in the example, we are printing out the fourth and the, from the fourth to the sixth line um, yeah, in, in a file.
Okay. Um, the next um thing that we're going to talk about is this dash e flag. So we uh mentioned this briefly uh, a few slides ago uh, yesterday, and the e stands for expression. So how we want to use it is that so following each uh dash e flag, we can add a new uh an, a a new command uh sentence there. So we can combine multiple uh commands together, and they um will be executed in series so that you don't need to run multiple SCD um, functions, um, uh, well, like multiple instances of the SCD commands, but we just need to run one, uh, like run it in one line. Yeah, let's also try the example here. Any questions so far? Actually, I don't know if like you have noticed this. So in the second pattern, in the example, we are trying to index in the line three here. However, after we inserted those two new lines um, right before the first line, the second line, you might think that the third line now becomes this line, but actually they reuse the indexes of the original file. So it's still line three of the original file. So that would be a difference if you run the first command and then save the result, or maybe even use the pipe sign and then redirect the results into the second command. Yeah, so there will be a difference actually, yeah. Okay, any questions? No, okay. Okay, so uh, there's a few more tips. Uh, one is that, um, Yesterday, uh, yeah, I think yesterday, we talked about this dash I flag, which stands for in place. So all of the changes that you make um, with the SCD commands will happen in place. So that's a good thing. So the changes will be saved to the original file. However, if you want to use the redirection sign that we learned yesterday, so you want to perform this SCD command on the file, uh, on this file, and you want to save it back to this file, it actually doesn't work. So um, yeah, you can re um, try any example and try to redirect back to the file. It will actually produce an error. So um, so whenever you want to make changes in the original file, I would recommend you to use the dash I flag. However, uh, it's also better to keep a backup of the original file just because that if you change your original file, you won't, like you won't get it back, yeah. And if you don't remember what you changed, you like, I like just won't like, get it back, yeah. So um, for myself, in my own experience, I would say uh, always save it in a different file. Well, that's my approach, yeah. Yeah, I always save it like, in a different file. Yeah. Just say like file two, maybe file two. Okay, uh, just as a practice and maybe a recap of what we learned yesterday, let's try these uh, two exercises. Um, yeah, I will hop into account now. Okay.
Go back to the store. Just copy that for the copy. No. Um, like, like, you're trying to follow the folder, right? Yeah. No, you can actually, um, like, go back to the slides that you need to the website. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can copy the whole thing from here. Okay. Uh, All the way to the end. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well. Any questions so far? Okay, what did you find out when you try these two examples? What did you find out? Like when you tried one, the first command and the second command? Yeah? What? What? Oh, yeah, okay. But do you see a, do you see an error there? Yeah, I thought you might see an error. Oh, okay, okay. Let's try it together. And what did you see when you run the second command? Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I think what it's going on uh, internally is that so the SED reads the file line by line and performs the function line by line. So, but however, when you are doing this function, so it reads the first line, performs the results, and can save it back to the original file, then like everything else, like the information is lost. So it couldn't perform actions on the second line. So that's why it becomes empty. But yeah, but the, the purpose is to show you that this one doesn't work. And if you want to save it back to the original file, use the dash i command. Okay, any questions so far? No? But if not, we will learn another very important command, which contains a lot of different functionalities, just as ICD. Uh, probably more, you can do some actually scripting with the R commands. Um, I think it's one of the most, one of the most commonly used commands. Um, yeah, so R, uh, what it does is it reads a file line by line, um, and it can parse the data into fields. So basically columns, and allows you to perform some very complex operations um, for each line. And then you can um, kind of reformat the output in a way and print it to a new file. Okay. So the basic syntax looks like this. So you have an awk, 
commands and you, uh, you can add some flags. And there's uh, some conditions you can add uh, that's enclosed in single quote. And there's a file name. So that's the info file name. So you want to read data from this file. Yeah. And I think if you recall uh, from what, we, what we've learned so far from those, uh, like uh, the two days before today. Um, so for all of these commands, the last argument would be the input file. So um, for the conditions, there are um, a lot, like a, a range of different things we can put there. For example, we can put a search pattern, like a string. Uh, we can do a comparison, uh, just like a, in a, um, like a regular con condition in, uh, that you use in Python or R, uh, like, like the if statement. Uh, we can also have a keyword, like begin and end, which indicates in which stage that you are performing the operation. And the what the operations can also be a lot of things. You, you can do just simply as printing the lines that match your conditions, like printing out, or we can do some arithmetic operations, like for example, oh thanks. Yeah, for example, we can okay, thanks. Yeah, for example, we can um I think one example that we'll see later is that if you have a column of numbers, we can add them up and outputs the sum of the, that whole column. So that's some operations that we can do, or we can even do more complex logics like if else statement. So this one would be similar to that one. So for the if else statements, you could put it in the condition or you could put it within this curly brackets. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, and for the flags, um, there are a lot more flags than what's been shown here. But some important flags is first that you can specify a delimiter between columns. So because we are reading the file in line by line and we are parsing it out in columns, sometimes it's non-standard uh, separator. For example, if it's a pipe sign or some other sign, then you can specify that. And also you can specify variables and to use that variable within your script. By script, I mean within this um, single quote. Yeah, let's get into the concrete examples. So um, the first thing we can do is we can print out certain column, which is, uh, I would say, very useful. Um, yeah, so the basic syntax is awk. And yeah, just without anything, just using the uh, curly brackets, uh, the single quotes, curly brackets, and operation. And the operation would be print. So the keyword here is print. So you print. And you use the dollar sign one to indicate the first column, uh, which is the one that you want to print out right now, and uh, followed by the name of the file. So, um, um, so after the file is being parsed into columns, uh, the awk uh, commands automatically assigns these um, variables uh, name to each column. And the first column will be just named as dollar one. The second column will be dollar two, and all the way up to the last column. And the dollar sign zero will just indicate all of the columns all together. So basically, the original file. Um, yeah. So if you print dollar sign zero here, um, you can try it on yourself. But you will just print out the original file. Uh, however, you can change the delimiters in the output file. So essentially you could print out the original file, but instead of um, can like the columns will not be separated by tab by default, but you could change it to like commas or other things. Um, however, here in the example, it's printing out the first column. And you can also print out multiple columns just by adding, just by adding, just by adding a comma and add the name of the other columns inside. So you can, for example, it's a uh, dollar sign one, comma dollar sign two, and the default delimiter here is space. So if you don't like space, you can change it to comma or tab or uh, um, or pipe sign. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's try these two example, printing out the first and the second column. If you like, then print out other columns. Yeah. Let's try.
And one thing I want to point out if, here is that, so the single quote here is very important. If you use double quote, it won't work. Uh, for example, if I'm printing out, uh, yeah, so I'm printing out the first column here, right? And, and I'm redirecting the result to a last command so that it doesn't overflow my screen. So I can open it up like this and close. However, if you use a double quote, you see just everything will be printed out. Essentially the op is like, like it's not doing anything there. Yeah, so the single quote is essential there. It's not like other programming language, uh, programming language that you can just uh, use single quote or double quote interchangeably. It's not the case here. And uh, instead of printing out the original, like part of the original text, you could also add some other th uh, strings that's kind of uh, appended or inserted in front, uh, inserted in front of, or like appended right after each line of the column that you are printing out. Uh, what you want to do is just put the new string here, enclose that with double quotes uh, and, and put a comma here, or you can put it just like right after this one. Um, and actually, um, so one way you can, so for example, if you look at here, or or, or uh, if you are trying on your own laptop, like Hoffman tool, you can see you are printing out the contact with the space and chr one here. If you want to change that space to a comma, like one easy way to put it is just um, put a comma like inside the double quotes. So, uh, and without adding a comma, here, uh, like a comma here, something like this. See, yeah, if you don't add a comma, so if you don't, so the comma is like some kind of indicator for the awk command to insert a default delimiter there. So if you don't add a comma, the the first string will just come right in front of the columns that you are printing out. And if you put a comma inside the double quotes, it will become part of the thing. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, just print out a new string. Oh. Yeah, just any string. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. I just print out anything there. Okay, any questions so far? And also, um, also, um, I think one other thing to notice that, um, You don't necessarily print out the column just one, like once, right? You can reuse the same column multiple times. You see, all of them will be printed out. So it just doesn't matter. It's kind of already saved within the commands. Uh, I think what's important is that, uh, well, the scenario that I usually use the all command in this way is that, uh, for example, you got a phenotype file. So we work with phenotype file a lot. And you may want to only use certain columns from the phenotype file. For example, the phenotype file can contain a lot of information like where the sample was collected, um, when was it collected, like what format it is in. Maybe those are not relevant to your research right now. So you can extract out the most important information, like for example, the sex, the disease, um, yeah, something like that. So you are working with a smaller uh, file, smaller table. Yeah. Any question? Okay, um, and a little bit more complicated is that you can also perform arithmetic operations uh, within the operation section, which is just the same as we mentioned before. And it's actually pretty easy. If the columns is numeric, you can just uh, use the arithmetic uh, signs here, like plus sign or minus sign, and it will perform the ar arithmetic uh, operations for you just automatically. So unlike in C++ or other languages that you need to assign a type to the um, to the columns uh, beforehand, uh, the org just can 
um, dynamically determines it. And if it's a, uh, like a, it can, so for example, so when you are looking at these two columns, it can be a string and can be a numeric at the same time. But if you are doing arithmetic operations, it will just convert that to numeric and like it does it for you. Yeah, let's try it, try this. Um, any questions so far? Hmm. Okay, yeah, there are a lot of built-in variables in the off command. Just like the dollar sign one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, um so here they say a few important ones. First is NR. NR essentially stands for line number here, but it's the number of records seen so far. So um okay, um okay, yeah, I'll talk about this, then we can get into the examples. And so the NR here basically um, kind of like an index of the lines that you are reading right now. So for example, if you print out NR comma dollar sign one, it will just be line like one and what's in the first column for the first line and two and, and what's on the second line. So basically you are indexing your results, uh, which is very useful. Um, the NF building variable stands for number of fields of current records. So uh, it just tells you how many columns you have. Oh, uh, no, it's like which which columns you're at right now. And the uh, FS and the OFS stands for the input field, se field separator and output field separator. So um, that is basically um, like, for example, for uh, FS, you can change the FS um, which works essentially in the same way as the dash f flag. So you can specify a delimiter, you can change it. For example, you can indicate the input file is using a field separator of um, pipe instead of a comma. Uh, so, so, so that's where you can um, assign to. And you can also assign a output field separator. So instead of all, uh, separating those columns using the default space as the, um, and file separator, you can also uh, change it to like tab or uh, or like comma or other things. Yeah, we'll see the example here. So if you look at the uh, example here, we are printing out an R. Basically, we are just printing out the line number one, two, three, all the way up to the end. Uh, you can combine that with the column um, index, like dollar sign one, two, or three. So you are combining results. Um, yeah, let's let's try to put the NR, but yeah, without adding the condition and see like like what um like what it's doing. Yeah, you can also combine that with the columns.
Yeah, see, so for the NR, it will just kind of uh, add a line number to each line it's being output. The NF tells you the number of fields in your file. So it says five here. So if we go into the file and check, it's one, two, three, four, five, five columns, right? So that just, and depending on how you want to separate, uh, kind of uh, parse the file, that number of columns can be different, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so here we get into the condition part. So we can add condition to the operation so it doesn't operate on every lines. So you can specify which line you want the operation to happen. So if you put this uh, double slash and put a string in between, it essentially means to search for that string in your file. And if the string is present in that line, you will perform the print uh, operation on, on that line. Yeah, let's let's try it. This condition look should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, it's very similar to uh, how SCD command. Uh, is using this search uh, search function. And what I'm doing here is that, so in the example, we are searching for the um, CHR. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm searching a different thing just to show you that it's not printing from the first line. It's printing from the line where it finds that string, yeah. And it doesn't have to be the first three characters. It can be anything in the middle. Uh, I don't know what's a good example. Um, Yeah, see, you can also find strings. For example, I'm looking for the string 88 here. It doesn't have to be the first two characters in, in each line. It can be just some string stats um, like come later, like comes later in the line. Yeah, yeah there was a typo actually uh, in the old uh, slides. Mm -hmm. Any questions for this one? No? Okay, um, so we talked about the dash V flags can um, uh, means variables. So, and we learned that there are two uh, variables related to file separator, which is the input file separator and the output file separator. So you can specify the what the file separator you want using the dash V flag. So you just write after the dash V flag, you write the FS equals to, the, um, this means the tab delimiter. So slash T means the tab separator. And basically you are assigning that to the uh, building variable. You can also assign, uh, you can assign the another building variable by inserting another dash V flag. So then you are assigning this comma to the output file separator. So basically what you're doing is that you're telling the all command that your file is using tab as the input file separator and you want comma to be the output file separator for your command. Yeah, let's try to run it. You can also change the comma and slash t to some other things. The output will be very different. For example, if you change the slash t to some other things, it may just not work. So uh, you may just get one column in your file because, um, yeah, like, yeah, if you, maybe you can use, the, I don't know, like a number eight as a file separator or something. You can get some like weird looking uh, outputs.
Okay, if no, um, for the conditions, instead of searching for strings, we could also do some if else condition. For example, you can search for the uh, number that's less, uh, yeah, we can use the less than, uh, yeah, we can do this kind of if else statement. For example, here, what it does is that it's taking out the second column and filtering out all of the uh, lines with the second column less than a hundred thousand and printing out every columns from those lines. Okay, is that clear? Am I explaining that clear? Um, yeah. And yeah, just similar to like other programming languages, the equal sign would be double equal uh, sign and the, the other greater than less than sign is the same, yeah. I mean, same, same, as, same as R. And we can also combine multiple conditions together. Uh, and the uh, to combine the conditions, we can use this AND operator. Uh, I think it's called, I think it's amber sign. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's double design or double pipe sign. Um, so it's AND or OR, and you can, so for example, here we just, we mean printing out the lines that's greater than 10,000, but less than 100,000. Because you are missing a single post. Oh, that's really oh. yeah. Okay. So I've I've seen I've seen this uh, in multiple people. So 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 when you are um like writing something, uh, and if you don't have the ending single quotes or the basically the ending single quotes, if you hit return, it will go to another line that allows you to. Um, keep writing, basically, keep typing. Uh, you can just add another ending single code here. And uh, oh. oh, actually, yeah, you add ending. Yeah, so so it, it, it does not affect uh, your um, 
like like scripting. Yeah. So it just automatically detects that because it's not paired. The quote, either the quotes or the bracket is not paired. It will go to the second line and then you can keep writing. Yeah. So it's not an error, just notice that. Yeah. And how you notice that is when you see, when you see it's not a dollar sign, but it becomes like a small um, greater than sign here. Yeah, you know, you know what's going on. And if you don't want to keep writing, if you want to rewrite the whole line, um, I think what I like to do is you can hit Control C, it kind of breaks out that uh, line. Yeah. So Control C is like force, uh, force a process or like a function to stop. Yeah. It's like force quit in a macro S. Okay. Any question? This one? No. Yeah, like we mentioned before, we can also do if else condition within the curly brackets as as an operation. So, however, to do that, you we need this if keyword, um, and we want to enclose the condition um within the um round brackets. So it's if round brackets with the condition, and but for the condition itself, it will look the same um as the condition that we showed here. Oh, another thing to note here. So you see here, they add a space right after the comma, right? But that is not reflected in the output. Okay, so like no matter how many space you add here, it will not affect your outputs unless you enclose that with a um, like double quotes. So for example, um, For example, we are printing out this uh, this thing here, right? So, so the default separator is a space. If we add, if I throw in some space there, just for me to kind of visually just see it better, it's not going to be reflect here. But if you really want the space there, you can just put um, encode that with the. Uh, uh, double code, and you see there's more space in between. Yeah. Yeah. So the space doesn't affect the all commands there. Okay, any questions? No? Okay. Uh, more about conditions. So um, we have if condition, and of course we'll have else condition. So the else condition will just have a, an extra keyword else, and you separate the if clause and the else clause with this uh, semicolon. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's let's try to run it. It's pretty long, long example. Oh, yeah. 
Any question so far? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about one more thing about arc and then we'll go into a break. Okay. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is calculation. So this is actually the example that I was mentioning before. So we can do calculation with arc as well. Um, and, uh, and this is example that how we can sum a column up. Um, I think this would be in what scenario would be useful. Mm. I don't know. Maybe when you're calculating like the average scores for the students in your class, you can sum it up and divide by the number of students. Yeah. So you don't need to read in the whole file into like R or Python to do it. You can just do it just within the Linux systems. Um, so it's faster. So the key word here is to use the sum. And this, uh, the so if you know like uh, some Python or some other languages that you may notice the plus and equal sign just means to recursively sum up everything there uh, and save the results to the sum variable. Um, so yeah, if you do sum plus equals the dollar sign two, which essentially means sum equals sum plus dollar sign two. So it's for like every number that you add to the sum starting mm -hmm. zero, um, like, yeah, basically you're effectively summing up the whole column. Um, and the end, yeah, remember we talked about the beginning and the end keywords. So the end indicates the first operation is done. So it's like stop there. And then you start another operation, uh, which you print out the sum variable. Um, I think one thing to note here is that you don't need to initialize uh, the um, the uh, sum variable. Uh, like for example, in some language, you need to de uh, declare it first and assign a zero to it. But here it just assumes the sum starts at zero and effectively kind of uh, sum everything up. Yeah, let's try running and see whether we get the same result. I'll try running uh, with you. Second, second column. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. Any question so far? No, okay. Um... Okay, um, yeah, then let's do a practice um, question and yeah, and we'll um, maybe have a I don't know, 15 minute break and um, where people can also do the practice at the same time. And we'll talk about the practice afterwards. Maybe. Okay. Um, we can also do dash V. Uh, we add a output file separator and change that to hyphen. So that's also one way we can do it. 
yeah, if we want to look at what it is, yeah, we can. That's also the way we can do it. Yeah, yeah. So there are multiple ways that we can do it, and actually, I think there may be other ways. Uh, we can also, uh, we can also change the file set output file separator. I think inside. Yeah, we can all, so so that's so there's three essentially three different ways we can do it. We can just throw that separator in the print class, or we can put in a separate class, or we can use the dash v flag to change the building variable. Um okay. Anyone has any question so far? No? Okay. Um the next one is oh. Yeah, the next one, we are uh, essentially just adding, yeah, adding a an extra clause, uh, an actual condition, right? So it's a uh, basically we're working with column four, and when it's not equals to CG, uh, we print out the, yeah, we print out the, print out everything. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll, I, I think I'll print out this. Or maybe not. Okay, it's easier. Yeah. So if it's not CG, it will be printed out, right? Yeah. Uh, and if it is CG, yeah, yeah, we we'll print out the kind of the complement of that. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So not equal to CG and equal to CG. Oh, yes, but not equal. Yes, oh, okay. like not equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. not equal is this one exclamation mark and equal sign? Yeah. If double equal sign, it means equal. Yeah. Uh, I add this type sign less just uh, because I don't want to overflow my screen. Yeah. But you don't need it. Okay, any question? No. Uh, and the last um, question is that we want to sum up the uh, sum up the last column. Um, uh, someone told me the last column is uh, the eighth column. So I just use that uh, and print out the sum variable. Yeah. Um, does everyone got the same result? Yeah. Uh, actually, um, I didn't know it was the eighth column. So what I did was we can use this nf uh, internal variable. Uh, oh, actually no. And. Is it? Oh, actually, maybe it not it, it does not work here. Oh, never mind. I I guess it does not work here. Okay, just just use that. Oh, actually, no, it works. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can use that enough. So remember, an app stands for the number of columns, uh, like number of columns in the file, which because in the Linux system, we start counting the column from one. So the number of column is also the last column, right? Um, what was going wrong here is that if I just use that, then it's just eight. So we are just essentially adding a lot of eight together. However, um, in Linux, if we want to use certain variable, kind of like as a variable here, like dollar sign eight, so, so we can add a dollar sign in front of it, and it becomes dollar sign eight essentially. And yeah, so I think this is better if your file have like say twenty columns, and if you don't want to count how many columns are there, uh, it's easier to use this one. 
But if it's just three columns, you can count it really fast and you can put number three there. Yeah. And this can also be a way to dynamically um, like um, kind of generalize your scripts to work with multiple files in the same structure because maybe some file have eight columns, other file have seven columns. Uh, this code will be more easily kind of uh, generalizable. Yeah. Any question? Yeah. Uh, any question so far? Any question so far? No. Okay, let's move on. Uh, another very important command line tool is called Grab. So Grab stands for a uh, global regular expression print, um, which uh, essentially um, helps you um, extract lines or like rows from a file that match your um, pattern. Um, yeah, okay. So the basic syntax, again, is very similar. So you have grab, uh, you have a place to add your flag, uh, you have place to put your patterns, and then the last in the last position, you will put in the input file name there. So the uh, there are a number of flags uh, that we can choose from. So um, firstly, the it's the dash V flag. So V stands for invert. So basically, if we are extracting out lines that match the pattern, you can reverse that behavior or invert that behavior by adding this dash V flag, which just prints out all of the lines that does not contain that string. Um, the dash N will also print out the line numbers where the lines contains that pattern. The dash C will give you a count of the number of lines that contains that string, contains the pattern. The dash L will um, give you a list of files that contain the string. So for example, the file name here uh, could be, um, could be like a file, um, how should I say? Could be a file name with a star inside, which is just more than one file, right? Uh, like remember that wildcard. So then it will list out which file contains that specific pattern. Um, yeah, maybe we'll show you an example later. And the dash i means case insensitive. So everything so far we learned um, in Linux is case sensitive. So if you are searching for a pattern, for example, um. Yeah, for example, we are searching for CHR, okay? If we are searching for CHR, see, we got the first line that contains this CHR. If we are trying to search for the big big H, then uh, it wouldn't work, okay? Because it's not there, but if we add a dash I flag, then it becomes case insensitive. So when it's useful is that, for example, um, it may be, I think maybe in some um, chromosome coordinates, maybe the first C is capitalized, but in other files, they are not capitalized. Then if you add in this dash I flag, then both files can be um, like the lines, uh, like the chromosome file from both file can be extracted without an error, yeah. Um, the dash E means extended regular expression. So we'll learn some regular expression later today. There are an extended version of regular expression, which just enables to match more possible combinations of characters. Um, and the dash B and dash A means uh, before context. So just, and after the context, so it will just show the 
number of lines before the match and after the match. Uh, I think I've never used this tool flex before, but um, yeah, just in case you want to use it, just um, like know like what they are. Uh, and the last thing is uh, color. So they use uh, colors uh, to indicate which uh, string is matched. Uh, I don't know what color is it here. Maybe it's all right. I think it's already colored. Yeah, it's already colored in this red. Maybe in some places it's not colored and you want to use that dash dash color to highlight your uh, pattern. Yeah. Um, I can also show you the other, what the other flag does. See, if you, if we don't add a dash V, it will just output the first line. If you add that, it invert the behavior and print out all of the lines. Um, yeah, see the, if you add dash N, it turns out the line number. So it's the first line that's being operated. Um, also the count, it's one. So we only have one match there. Dash L outputs the file name that contains the match. For example, uh, yeah, we have three file that starts with chr1 here so if you use that, that dash l actually uh, maybe two yeah you see if i'm searching for the chr2 and the chr star basically means all of the files that starts with the chr characters three characters and the file that contains the chr2 will be um, like shown there and yeah so in this case is chr2-10 yeah, let's get into the example on the slides. So uh, when we are, um, so the basic usage of that, uh, the grab is just grab with a string and the input, uh, no matter. Uh, so if you are just searching for a string without space, then you can do like what I did here, just CHR, right? Um, if it contains space, for example, um, yeah, for example, if I'm trying to search for chr1 space one in a chr1 10 see I, I i i'm able to search it but if i don't add the quote here then it, it wouldn't work right so yeah so the quote is important if you contain space there uh if you use dash v we i already showed that and uh, you invert the behavior and uh, the dash c will just uh, outputs account instead of the actual match and um, in your result. Um, okay, I just thought about one, uh, I thought of one scenario that I like to use Scrap is, for example, if you run your job script, like a, like a Hoffman tool jobs, and usually at the end, the, uh, the program will tell you whether you finish it successfully or not. And you can grab that line like extract all that line from the log files. And if you cannot find that line, that means probably sometimes it means the uh, the job failed. If you can't find that, then, then it's not failed. For example, in my case, um, if we go to where I go to the place where I run some script this morning, uh, there's a log file. Oh, there's a log file. See, there's a lot of log files, just maybe open any of them. Go to the end of the file, you see there's a success, right? Yeah, but without going into a file, since we have 400 log file here, I don't want to open each file. I can just grab success. Uh, yeah, then I can find that line, then it works, right? If um, if I cannot find that success, then like, like from the file, uh, then it means the job failed. So um, each one scenario that uh, we can use the grab command. Um, I don't know if this is too easy to run. Yeah, but let's try to run this example. Uh, just see the dash C flag will output the same thing. Uh, if you combine the grab 
commands and the work count command that we learned yesterday. Yeah. Remember the dash L um, will give you the count number of lines in the file. Uh, if you want to extract all some lines from the file, for example, the example that I used yesterday, if you have a human file, you want to extract out all the males from that sample, you can use this command to extract or all the genomes or all of the, uh, the samples from a specific location. You can use this. Yeah, you yeah, can use that. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, okay, yeah, so see in this example that um, essentially it's what I've shown before. You can have multiple files names uh, in the grab command. So if you have one file or the other file, it will just try to identify the lines from all of the files um, that contains the CHR string or the pattern okay and if you add this dash l uh, dash l flag it will instead of outputting the okay so the normal behavior is the file name a colon and the line that match uh like the line that matches your string um if you just add the dash l flag it will just omit other output and just output the name of the file that contains the match um I'm trying to think of a scenario specific one that you can use it, but I cannot think of one right now. Um I don't know. Imagine if you have sequencing data of both um human and like mouse uh, in like in your folder. If you want to uh, like take out the one that contains the the uh, the human DNAs, um, yeah, maybe you'll just grab all of the files that contains the uh, homo sapien keywords from that uh, and you get a list of file names and you can use those file names to kind of move the files, right? Um, 
you can combine that with some other uh, command to, to move files to a different folder. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's try let's try these two examples. Okay. He just assumes all of them, but like each row is one count. So far, yeah, I think that's right. I've seen in multiple periods, uh, on multiple periods screen. So I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's okay to use the dash c flag or use the word count, uh, command. I think both will give you the same result. Okay. Um. Yeah. We can also that we can combine those flags. Um. Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far before we get into other topics? No. Okay. The other topic is uh quite important, but it's not unique to um Linux. It's regular expression that uh like Python or uh 
R, other, uh, like all the languages use regular expression if you want to match, uh, match strings. So regular expression or short as regex, so reg and x, uh, which it just means is a sequence of characters that is used to match other strings, like in a generalized pattern. For example, uh, we all have our um, GCLA ID and it's uh, nine digits. I feel like I've seen 10 digits. 10, 10 digits, but I don't know. But yeah, assume it's nine digits. So then the pattern would be nine numbers, right? So, um, and for phone numbers, it's uh, the first three, the first three digits would be enclosed by a round bracket, followed by a hyphen and another three digits and a hyphen and another four digits. So basically kind of uh, like without actually learning regex, you can, um, already see there's a pattern of those uh, strings. And the regex is just a way to kind of, uh, um, uh, to make that idea more concrete. Um, and in address, it's again the same. So we can see there's a address of the road or like boulevard that we are on. Uh, and then there's uh, like city name and uh, the uh, name of the state with two capital letters and a, uh, a a postal code with five digits. So there's also a structure there. So, okay, yeah, let's see how we are making that idea concrete. Uh, okay, so, so in this example, so um, if we write just the characters as it is, then it's essentially, what we just learned, we are finding uh, that piece of strings in any of the uh, longer strings. Um, so if we have CKS, the part that's CKS in either of the string will match, right? Hmm. However, um, we can make this string a little bit more uh, general by introducing a, um, special character that's just a single dot uh, which can match any character just once any single character so in this case we have a o dot k which just means that for any three um for any three letters if it starts with o and end with k and no matter what's inside it will be uh like a, su a successful match Okay, um, yeah, let's try to run this example on your own and you'll see uh, what's going on there. Yeah. Okay, um, has everyone tried it? Yeah, so you all see the same 
behavior, right? So uh, what I just uh, showed here was that, so um, the so don't think of the dot as a match to the alphabet or like the letters. It can match any characters. So no matter whether it's a space or it's a, like a, a punctuation, so like any thing will be matched, okay? Uh, and it's um, and like exactly once. If it's like two letters in between, it wouldn't work. Um, if it's like just okay without anything in between, it also wouldn't work. So it's different from the wildcard character that we learned yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Um. Yeah. So in very special situation, if you want to match a period or like or a dot in your string, you will need to use this thing called the escape. So it's basically a backslash, uh, which basically means to remove the special meaning of the character. Um, so by special meaning, oh, sorry. By special meaning means that, so here the dot is very special. It's not a period or it's not like a dot, it means a any character. If you want to remove that special meaning and now it becomes just a regular dot, you see nothing will be matched because it's a regular dot right now. But if you uh, have like a regular dot here, then that part will be matched. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, this is important if you want to match the dot. Um, Actually, I think I wasn't clear enough. It it kind of like if you want to match the dot only, like not necessarily just match the dot, match the dot only. So you need to escape it because normally it will be matched anyways, right? So if you want to match it only but not other types, then you need that. Okay. Um. Any question? No. I think I forgot us. How many people have? used regex or learn regex before no no okay okay yeah then it's good that we're learning it can be used to other languages as well um so the next concept that we're going to learn is um groups so we use the so the dot means like any characters possible uh however if we want to just have a smaller set to choose from. We can use the um, the brackets here to uh, um, and uh, like we can put that set of characters that we want to match in the brackets. Uh, so, for example, in this example, I think okay, we don't have that, but okay, then I will just write it. Um, Yeah, you see, so here we have uh, so at that place we have three possible uh, letters that we want to match. One is E, the other one is R, the other one is O. So we can put those three letters, no matter what order we use, they will all match. Um, however, if we just want to match any two of them, you see, we will just put two letters there. Um, So, so it has to be something in between. So what I show here, if it's just BAT, it wouldn't work. So it has to be one of the options here. Okay. Any question for this one? No. Okay. Um, another thing is that, so if I don't want to match, for example, we have four, four possible strings here to match. If I don't want to match any strings that's within this bracket, within this set, we want to use this um, 
like small head, like a head. So then we are going to match anything that does not contain E or R there, uh, which will be O. But it still has to have at least one letter there, like not at least like exactly one letter is between B and A. Yeah. Okay, any questions here? Oh, is it clear? Am I explaining it clearly? Okay, and there are also special, um, um, like special symbols reserves for commonly used cases. For example, if you really want to match a lot of numbers, for example, uh, uh, something like that. Uh, okay, so if we want to match different numbers there. Oh, sorry, I made a typo. Yeah, so we can either put one, two, three, four, five, like one, two, three, four, five, all the way up until zero there, or there's a special um, symbol reserve. This zero dash nine does not mean zero hyphen and nine. It means from zero to nine. So it will match all of the possible single numbers there. Um, yeah, single digit there. Um, or we can use double brackets with the keyword digits enclosed by those double colons. So it's, um, yeah, we can also use that. It's, uh, I like to use the zero to nine because I think it's shorter. Uh, we can also do the same thing for alphabet or we can also do it for the alpha numeric characters. So from A to Z uh, and from zero to nine, we can use all of those, yeah. So this would be useful because if you put a dot there, it can match uh, like a space or comma, but if you use this L, uh, L num, it will also match those 26 letters plus zero to nine, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, let's do some practice um, here. Uh, I guess. Yeah, let's try to do this too here. Just the children of the time. Oh, hi. Hmm. Yeah, actually, that color flag really does not matter on Hoffman. So yeah, just to save our time and effort, we can do it now. Mm -hmm. Are you on the stage with that? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh
Okay, um, has everyone tried the two questions? Okay, what, uh, what are some suggestions to the first questions? Like how we can do it? Yeah, we can use that shy. What are other ways we can do it? The dash i is specific to the grab. Um, Grab command, right? If you're not using grab. Yeah. Any suggestion? Um what about using brackets? Right? Yeah, we can put those two options inside the brackets. Just big F and small F. Yeah. For a second one, um, yeah, just trying uh, so you see the difference there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so okay. So the hat actually have has different meanings depending on the context. So if it's within the brackets, um, yeah, like here, if it's within the brackets, it means not. So not e and not o. However, if it's outside brackets, it means the beginning of the string. So. Uh, and the dollar sign also has a special meaning here. It's actually the same as what we learned yesterday. The dollar sign means the end of the string. So um, so what it does is that, let's try uh, just, I don't know, creating an example here. Um, okay, so, so if we want to um, match for example, E here. So if we just put E, then both will be matched, right? If we want specifically match the second um, circumstance, we can throw that hat there. It means just the EAT has to be at the beginning of the string. Why is it not? Oh, I see. Uh, I think... Oh, I think it doesn't. Let's do it here. Okay, yeah, let, it has to be split into two examples. Okay, see, okay, yeah. So in the first example, the EAT, um, well, so the reason it was not working is because the EAT is already at, in the beginning, like in the middle of the string. So if it's just by itself, and if it's at the beginning of the string, then the hat will work. And the, in the second situation, because it's not at the beginning, then it won't work. So the beginning means the beginning of the entire string, not that word. Um, and uh, the dollar sign would works in the same way. I mean, so this one, see, that will work, and uh, this will not work. Okay, yeah, so we wouldn't see that. Uh, any question here? No. Okay. okay. Um, some other ways, um, well, some more things we can do with the regex is that um, we can also add repetition. We can also, how should I say? Um, we can also have repetitions of letters, uh, just the same as uh, when we were talking about the Yiseli ID, we have nine digits, right? So it's basically one, like a a single digit repeated nine times, right? So we can specify that uh, in a way. So uh, we can specify that uh, either with a fixed number of times that we want to specify, or it can be any 
numbers in general. So there are a lot of special characters. So the first special character is a star. So the star means uh, we are matching a character zero times or more times. Um, for example, I just create some example here. Um, uh, You see, all three will be matched, right? Because uh, yeah, maybe I'll I'll put one example that's not not gonna be matched, so it's different. Yeah, okay. So you see, the star symbol means we are matching the sing the one character immediately before it, like in front of it, zero times or more times. So in this specific example, if it's AC, then we are matching B zero times. If it's A B B C, then we are matching the B twice. So it could be, so it's a general way to match multiple, to match the B. Uh, and uh, there, we, however, if we want the B to be matched at least once, so at least once, there's a plus sign. Oh, wait. Maybe I need. Sorry, it's not match. Okay, maybe. Oh, I need this. Okay. Well, so for the so for anything beyond the star, we actually need to add this dash capital E flag because it's the extended regular expression patterns. Um, so with that flag, with that flag, so now we can use the plus sign. The plus sign just means that we are matching the B once or uh, so at least once or more. So uh, so if you see the difference, where so it's just the difference is whether those AC will be matched in this specific case. Uh, we could also restrict our search to zero or one time. Um, so if we put a question mark here, then this AC and ABC will be matched. Okay. And we can also speci specify the specific number you want the preceding um, letter to be matched. Uh, so we can, so, and we use the curly brackets in this case. So if we want B to be matched exactly once, then we just put one there. Um, if we want to match it between one to uh, like at least like at least maybe it's three times, then nothing will be matched here. However, if we want to ma match between one to three, so the once and twice uh, will be matched. And also we can do something like this. So like up to a certain number of matches. Um, Okay, and we can also specify a range by using N and M. And we can also do a uh, yeah, we can also do uh this. We can also do this. So basically it means we are matching either A B or a single C from our strings. So the single letter C will be matched and the ones, uh, the B and C will also be matched. Maybe it's better if we use this. See, it's either A, B or A, B and B, C will be matched. Okay, any questions? Yeah, I would say as you use it, you maybe get more familiar with it, but um, definitely just by looking at one example, it may look a little bit confusing. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, any questions on this slide? If not, I will introduce another concept and then we'll have a short break and we can do the practice during the break, okay? Okay, so the last concept for the regex here is groups. So um, the groups, we have for groups, we use uh, the round bracket um, or parentheses. So for parentheses, um, means that we are matching the patterns within the parentheses altogether. So note in like, note what I did here was that, so we are matching the single character B immediately in front of the question mark once or multiple times. If we want to match A and B together and A and B have uh, like present at least once or more times together, then we need to use that bracket. Um, and using an example here. Oh, sorry, the question mark is zero time or one time. So this one would be a better example, yeah. And uh, okay, so the second and the fourth example will be matched because the AB is present once in the first example and twice in the fourth example, right? So that's how we want to use that. Okay, any questions on this slide? No? Okay, let's, yeah, let's try this practice and while we have a 15 minute break. Yeah, yeah if I, yeah, if you feel that I didn't explain any part uh, clearly, just let me know and I can explain it again. Yes, um, so we need to know a little bit about the SQL language, SQL language. Yes, I need to be able to track that better. Uh, yeah, and, yes, yes, and in that workshop, we'll learn pretty much all about SQL. But if, um, yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, I don't know the specific request, but to begin, yeah, you will need to um okay. Uh, and you can write um some query with for query like uh, like a script and you can extract out the information that you need. Uh, uh for example, for example. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. No, we need the table name And you can see the cost the A is here. Yeah, but you can do more specific tasks with the message. So, yeah, but you write everything here and create the basic code and you can store information. Profit, create here, uh, right click, new query, yeah, and then you start typing on that.
Yeah, it is the Oh, it's slightly different. We need to use Google Notebook. Okay, and we use the R kernel of the Google Notebook. Yeah. No, but what's your second? Yes, we need to learn a new language, and also we need to. So you do not have access to the actual kinetic data field. There's another thing called the Linux VM, a virtual machine. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. So you need to combine this and that. It's, uh, it's rather a little bit complicated. I would say that it takes a workshop. It will take a while to learn the SQL language. Um, and, and after that, we will be able to merge everything. And, and actually, there's a third problem. So because you want to combine your data and the other data, right? So you need to, uh, you know, are you going to? Yeah. So you need to transfer it. Yeah. Uh, what do you need to transfer? Like, like some steps. Something. You need the some steps to calculate. You want. You also want coverage as the like you said, like other branch for that. Okay. So you need the um the the uh, beta right? The, no. Yeah. The problem is that. You cannot transfer data out of the yeah yeah, yeah. but you need to move this in into yeah so so for that step uh, we cannot help you you need to talk to the hospital and they will upload your scripts to uh, to, to the other uh, their, their, their platform and then you can go to the it's the key part for that so you cannot transfer out or in so they need to approve it first and then Yeah, you need to tell me exactly what your uh, search refund would be. Yeah, because the simple language needs that specific uh, information. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can email me.
I'm covering my face. Why you can you know you know me? I can I answer that. Yes. Or is your PI uh my bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know you know me, I'm you can talk about it. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you can email me first. I, I was, I was, yeah, I was thinking about it while I travel. Then, yeah, we can, and we're done with the meet again. Okay, then we can go from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, how's everyone doing with the questions here? Okay, any um uh, any suggestions how we can tackle the first part of the question, like two capital characters? What is the way that we can match capital letters? Yep, and how do we match it twice? Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, so for the middle six digits, how do we match digits? Mm, brackets zero to nine, yep. And how do we match is six times? Six, right? Yeah. So it's uh let me write down here. Uh A to Z um, twice. Uh, and 
zero to nine six times. Okay, how do we match dot two? Dollar sign dot two. Uh, yeah, uh, to end it, so we put the dollar sign at the end. At the end, okay. Okay, what do we need to do with the dot? Escape it, right? Yeah, so we want to escape it in case it match anything else. Okay, so yeah, we can we can do that that way. Okay. Um okay, has everyone tried to apply it to this file? I was not sure. Uh Sorry, it's not here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, maybe, let me see. Okay, so yeah, I think there's an ambiguity in the question where it says ends with dot two, but it's actually, in this case, it means the end of that word instead of the end of the whole line. So if we throw in that dollar sign there, it wouldn't have any match because in this case, it's that word and with dot two, not the whole like uh, road ends with dot two, okay. Yeah, um, did anyone get the same result? I guess I do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, again, uh, the PDF also got the same result. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, so this would be the homework for everyone to do at home. So if you are taking the course uh, for credit, just submit it. Uh, I think in the email I mentioned by the end of this week, but yeah, let's do an actual week by the end of next week. Just um, yeah, send the result to me and I'll check it. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so now we are on day three slides. So we've already used this command before. It's called echo. So essentially it's the print command uh, or the print function um, in the Linux system. So, and uh, what we've been doing is we just put echo and combine that with a string, right? So, um, and we'll print out that string. And uh, here it shows there's a special um, reserve keyword, keyword for us. Yeah, if you, uh, sorry. Oh, it's not working. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. It's yeah. So if you just type in date, so if you yeah, okay. So if you just type in date, so um, it will show you the current system time, um, the system of Hoffman tool, um, like on your screen, so that you know, uh, um. When it is so, sometimes uh, so a scenario that this function can be useful is that so when you run your job, maybe you can print out the date um, before you run the job and after you run the job, it will tell you what how, how much time is used by uh, like it's used by the uh, script or by the program. Uh, so maybe some job is really slow, it can take up to a few hours, some of them are just a few minutes. So sometimes you want to benchmark that before you kind of prepare your uh um like jobs. Okay, there are two flags, two possible flags that we can use. One is the dash n. So um essentially the the dash n flag just removes the 
um, the uh, let's see, it just removes the uh, the new line character at the end. So then other results will ju just kind of be printed out directly after the string. And the dash E will en enable interpretation of the backslash escapes. So for example, um, what's a good example here? Uh, yeah, so for example here, so we are printing out one, two, three, backslash N. So it just print out as it is. However, if we do dash E, the slash N is actually the new line character in the string. So now it becomes a new line. Okay, any questions? Yeah, is that clear? Okay, and uh, here, like in the last part of the tips, uh, so if we, you want to put two separate commands together in one line, you can put the semicolon here, um, and then you can run two commands at once, and the output will be printed kind of consecutively. Okay, any questions so far? No? Okay, um, yeah, we have about half an hour. We'll talk about um, a little bit about how you can write a um, script in shells. So it's called bash script. Um, so for example, for example, um, if we create uh, our first script. So yeah, you don't have to have that dot sh ending, but it's a good way for you uh, to indicate that this file is a script instead of a regular text file. Yeah, you don't have to use it. Yeah. Um, uh, assuming we are, so assuming this file contains uh, one line, which is echo hello world. So it is a text file just by itself, right? But we could use some um, softwares to run it. For example, we can add that bash command. So basically, it's like using Python or R. So we are using the Python or R or bash like interpreter to interpret or execute the file. Then it becomes uh, more than just a text. It becomes a script. Um, another way we can do it. Remember, we learn about the different permissions. And one of the permission is uh, the execute permission or the executable permission. We can effectively add that execute permission to this file and it becomes an executable file. And if it's an executable file, you can execute it by just putting this dot slash. So that's the relative path. Okay, remember that dot slash means it's a relative path. Dot means just current folder slash meaning the like the folder um, and within it we have this file and then the that echo command will also be executed i mean we can also use the absolute path it, it's the same thing it, it it just looks nicer if we uh use the dot slash any questions mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 If it's a Unix space, like Unix like system, if it's like Linux space, yeah, you can use it. You can copy it to other uh, places. Yeah, you can run it all at the same time. As long as you have this bash commands and you, the bash will interpret your script. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So to write scripts here, we really need to be pretty familiar with the Vim editor. So how you can insert, how you can quit. Any question? No? No? Okay. Um, 
Yeah, okay. As you mentioned here, one way is we can use the bash command to interpret the uh, executable file, or we can make it an executable file by itself. Um, yeah, let's try to run it on your own laptop. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So, every time after you are in the insert mode, hit this save. Okay, any questions so far on this? No? Okay, yeah. Let's learn a little bit more. Uh, so as in any programming language, there are variables. Uh, there are environment variables predefined um, in Linux systems as well as some uh, like um, um, inherited to uh, like um, specific to the Hoffman tool environment. So there are Linux environment variables, some Hoffman tool environment variables, and you can also define your own variables. Um, for example, uh, for example, um, okay. Um, does everyone know there's a scratch folder on Hoffman tool that you can use besides the home directory? So, okay. So first of all, the path to, so, so okay. So all variables, for example, if like, mm, like, so uh, all variable are just strings, right? Like I say, my variable equals one, two, three, right? So to use that variable, you add the dollar sign first. And then do that, and the echo will print out the contents of the variable. Okay, so it's the same for environment variable. The only difference is that, uh, so for example, we have a home a variable that stores the path to our home directory. For example, um, the dollar sign home uh, is passed to my home directory. And it's my username. Um, and it's dynamically determined for everyone. So for you, it will be uh, passed to your own directory. And there's a place called Scratch. Scratch. The Scratch folder is, I think, two terabytes of storage that's uh, assigned to you. Uh, if you go to the Scratch folder, uh, yeah, we can also use that environment variable instead of typing out the whole path. Okay, so now I'm already in the scratch folder. Oh, sorry. 
C. Okay. So now I'm in the scratch folder, C. And I've already stored something there. Uh, it's a place that have um, more um, storage space for you. Oh, I think I... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, it has two terabytes for you. However, the downside is that the content will be erased every two weeks if you don't use it. So if the timestamps, for example, let me show you here. Um, see, the timestamp was a while ago, right? So if it's more than two weeks um, or two weeks and a half, maybe, um, then the file will be erased without uh, notifying you. However, if everything is up to date, so if you used everything there, within the recent two or three weeks, then the things will not be erased. So it's a place for you to do some experiments or even run your projects, um, but it's not a place for you to store things permanently. Okay. What? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, you can touch everything there. If it has a lot of, uh, it, if it has a lot of, um, um, files, the touch command may take a while, uh, but it's definitely a good idea to touch everything. Um, actually, um, I, I, I use this command, but you can also find it online. So yeah, uh, so if you, you can see, this line just effectively, effectively finds all of the files in your scratch folder and execute this touch command on all of them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, if you want, you can write it down. So it's, yeah, it works for everyone. Um. So if you just run this line of code, you don't need a second line. I I just keep a record of it. But if you run the first line, um, every two weeks, uh, then you are safe. Yeah. But for example, maybe over the summer or over the winter break, uh, you went on vacation and forgot. Yeah. You may come back and like lose all of your data. It happened to me before. Yeah, but fortunately I have backup now. Okay, uh, fine, exit the file. Okay. okay, so there are more environment variables for you to explore. Uh, there are some important ones. For example, the there's an also variable called PWD, but uh, it's the same as PWD, so you don't really need to uh, use it. Um, but the thing to know is that um, we use dollar sign to interpret it, uh, a variable and you can use echo to print out the contents. Uh, if you want to check all of the environment variables available to you, you can run this set command. It prints out a lot of things, but if you just type it to last, you see there's a lot of variables stored. I think most of the, most of them are like not use this, but use this to you. You don't need to really know it, but that's how you can check it. Okay. Um, um, okay, yeah, let's talk a little bit about this. So there's a variable called path. Okay, there's a variable called path. Um, so for example, if I want to run some um commands for example uh yeah so let's go back to this one okay so as i mentioned if i want to run the script that i just created i need to use either an absolute path or a relative path uh to this file for script the sh and if i'm there then i can execute this file right but assuming if I'm not, I'm not in that folder, okay. And right now I cannot run the first uh, script, the ISH file. Yeah, it doesn't work. I need the absolute path, right? However, one way to use it is that we can actually add the path, the absolute path to this first script, uh, yeah, to this first script, the ISH, into this variable called path and then you can run the first script anywhere on your Hoffman two systems without um, 
typing in the full path. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um yeah. Um so I think it's for some software it's automatic, but uh basically every time you install new software on Hoffman tool, they add their path to this path variable, and then you can use the uh like the app or the software anywhere on your Hoffman tool uh, without the need to type in the full path. Um, and another useful information, uh, I mean, uh, useful command is this which command. Um, the which command tells you what you're running. For example, um, okay, yeah, for example, the which command, uh, like, so if you put the which command and the name of the command that you are searching for, it will tell you where this software is stored. So every command is a software, remember, okay? So no matter whether it's a CP or LS command, or even the, the like the move command, if you type in which and move, it will tell you the command is stored in this user bin MV, uh, user bin folder. And the, yeah, it's so it's there. So um, if you don't know where your software is, for example, if you are, running your Python uh, on the Hoffman tool platform, but you forgot where you stored it, you can run a which Python 3, for example, which Python 3, it will tell you where I stored my Python 3, okay. Okay, um, yeah, the next thing is um, is variable. So, uh, I, uh, so I've already mentioned for variables, we just need to assign a value to a variable without defining the type of variable, like without defining whether it's a string or whether it's numeric or array. So a, um, a numerical variable would just be, like say three. A string variable can be with the quotes or without the quotes. It's the same. Uh, and uh, however, Again, if it has space, then you have you, like you have to put the double quotes. Okay. So and there's also array. So array we use a parenthesis and puts the number of things you want to put in the, in the array. Okay. Um. So and like there are a few nodes. No space is allowed between the variable and the equal sign uh, and the value. So it's different from other programming languages. You just have to be uh, like using very uh, like the name of variable immediately followed by the equal sign and the value of variable, and all of the variable name is case sensitive, uh, which applies to everything in uh, in the Linux systems. And we use the dollar sign to uh, refer to a variable, same as environmental variable, um, and avoid giving avoid naming your variable. Uh, with a uh, environment variable names. So that may cause a problem. For example, we know there's a variable called PWD. Don't, but don't create another variable with PWD. Yeah. Okay, and the data type is automatically assigned. So it really doesn't matter uh, whether it's a character, ver a character variable or, um, or um, a numerical variable. Um, but I think these are very, um, yeah, like not fun. Um, yeah, yeah, example. Yeah, let's let's move on. So, um, so there are some options that we can do with the variable. Okay, so for example, so we know our first variable is three. We can perform. Uh, arithmetic operations on the variables. What we want to do is we just do this uh, dollar sign and brackets, and you kind of uh, refer to the variable one with that dollar sign and just put the arithmetic operations that you want to use. And if you interpret uh, or interpret the variable two, then you see the result. So there's some operations that you can do. 
Mm, yeah, and the output will be int only. So that's the case if you want to do division. You see, you will just get the uh, uh, an integer number. Yeah. Any questions so far? And the percent sign, similar to other languages, gives you the remainder. Yeah, so the remainder is one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any questions? There are also some uh, string operations that we can do. Um, and to do string operations, we use a dollar sign with a parenthesis. Okay. For example, um, we start the expression with the keyword expre um, expert expression, basically. Um, and we get the length of of a some character, right? Uh, like a A, B, C, D. So it's, it's not easy to see here, okay. See, we got the length of variable there. So you, so there's some predefined operations that you can do, you can search online, but you always start the expression with this four characters, the XPR. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? No. And there are also array operations, just like accessing arrays in like vectors in uh, C++ or vectors in uh, R um, or list in Python. Um, I think var3, I, th I think we've already created one, right? Okay, yeah, so we've created a variable, uh, an array um, called var3 um, and uh, I'm trying to print out var3. However, I only get the one single digit, which is because every time you printing out the, an array, you just print out the first element from the array. Yeah, to, what? Oh, we have 10%, yeah, we're, I think we're good. Okay, so um, to access a specific element, we can do this. For example, uh, for example, we have what we know it's uh we know it's one two three four five. So if we want to access any index, we just access that by uh using a uh, brackets and put the index number, and the index starts with uh, starts at zero. So if we want to access the second element, we put one basically two minus one there, then we know it's a two. If we want to access the fifth element. We just do five minus one. So we are getting the fifth elements. Um, if we want to print out all of the elements of this array, we just put an add sign there. Then the echo command will print up all of the contents. Okay. Any questions? No? Yeah, let's do some practice. Um, yeah, create your own variable um, like with the name you like, with the content you like, and try to perform some uh, operations on it. Yeah, and this can be our last. 